Hey, to the people, what's up, everybody? Happy Sunday. Uh, it is me, Chase. This is No Chaser TV, and we have serious business. Serious business to get into today because we are reviewing episode six of Bad and Bougie. And Tamika, I'm on your ass. So without further ado, let's get into it straight. No Chaser. Okay, I know you guys are saying, where's Jasmine? Where's Jasmine? She will be back on the next episode. Um, but this episode, we're going to go ahead and do it solo dolo. Um, this is the new time frame or the new day that we're going to be having. Uh, Bold and Bougie recaps released on Sundays. And so I know God rested on Sunday, Lord Jesus. And he said, thou shalt rest. But baby, I don't really have chance a time to rest because I have some ass. To get into so god please forgive me for what i'm about to do and what i'm about to say but i told y'all all along let's go ahead and play the song get your instrument out boom 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 boom, boom. chase is right boom 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 chase is right because that was right all along is tamika homophobic one two three the answer is yes i'm not waiting for anybody to agree or disagree as far as my mouth my eyes my ears are concerned you are homophobic, mama, and there's no way around it, sister. There's no way around it. Make sure that you guys like and subscribe to this. If you do, I would love for you to. If you don't, oh, the hell well, because I am going to go up here and give it to you the way I feel like it should be given. Malaysia goes ahead and feels that she can't get up from shit unless you wipe your ass first, meaning that she is moving forward with proceeding in her pursuit of back expenses or back child support owed to her from her ex-husband that she has not received a payment in over nine years. They have gone ahead and served him and now he is aware that Malaysia is on that ass and she is very happy about her independence. Good for you, Malaysia. Do what you need to do to secure a future for your children. I'm not going to get into all of the backstory on Basketball Wives. We've talked about it. We already know that the girls were allegedly saying all types of things about her, um, allegedly being, I guess, evicted. The, the state that her children were in as far as uh, their outward appearance was concerned. I'm not getting into that. That's not for me to decide, but what I will say is congratulations to you for no longer feeling afraid or held back by what the public perception or what people's perception of your reality is. You're living in your reality, and the reality is that if he also helped you make those children, he needs to pay. So go ahead, mama. Do your thug feels, or please don't show up to court in that outfit that you had on. Y'all know which one I'm talking about? Y'all know which outfit I'm talking about? Lord Jesus. This one. Please don't show up according to this. The people are going to ask you to leave immediately and ask you to pay him. For however long you guys are married, if you guys, if you showed up dressed to everything with him like this, okay? With that being said, we're going to move right along with the episode. Uh, it's time for the divorce tour that we have been talking about for weeks at this point. Gauthier and Princess are there first, and they speak on their blow up. Um, and Princess just wants to move on from it, but Gauthier says she's going to make her pay for it through her portion of the divorce tour, where they're going to go ahead and fill up, uh, blow up balloons um, with, let me get Senta, honey, yes, let me get Senta. They're going to go ahead and blow up balloons with things they want to give away or get rid of, and then they're going to let the balloons fly into the atmosphere. Princess blows up her balloon, and she says uh, that she's doing so in an effort to let go of shame that she's been carrying around um, for, you know, the situation with her breast and just everything in everyday life. Letting go shame, she blows that balloon up, she lets it go, and it doesn't get any further than the ground, really. It didn't go anywhere. And so they had the right idea to go ahead and pop the balloons, but I felt like that was ironic. So hopefully that wasn't a metaphor for, you know, her still carrying around this baggage and us having to be stuck with it for another two to three episodes, because Lord Jesus, let go of that shame, honey. You have created the most iconic franchise that has begat so many sons. Ironically, you're on one of the sons of the Real Housewives of Atlanta, which is bold and bougie. So be you walk in your confidence and knowing that you are woman enough and there is no shame to anything about your game, honey. Push through. With that being said, Tamika comes and she blows self-doubt. Who gives a shit? I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't care. Malaysia gives away fear and Crystal arrives and gives away pain. 
I'm not really sure if Goshe gave anything away. If she did, y'all go ahead and let me know in the chat. Let me know what the hell she gave away. And uh, hopefully it stays given. The ladies didn't get on the bus. And to me, here we go, y'all. So the ladies get on the bus. Tamika, it begins freestyling. And she says in some of the lyrics, never in life I'll go in a ditch before I fuck with a bitch. A fuck a bitch, excuse me. Okay unsolicited we don't know why you're rapping about this but okay whatever um and then she says a bitch is lit but i'm not fucking a bitch the only scissor that i want today is the one to cut a bitch that asked me to go that way okay <sighs> y'all help me understand why these homophobic laden raps are a part of her repertoire. Like, who asked for this? Nobody asked for you to give these dry raps. Please do not release a mixtape with Money Shaw. Because <laughs> Money Shaw got what? Money Shaw got this. Money Shaw got that. Money Shaw, you and honey to get in the studio together with somebody who actually knows how to rap and get it together because that was fool la la. Furthermore, as I posed the question just a few seconds ago, why the hell are you rapping about this stuff unsolicited? Did Is there something that we're missing? Did Goshe come on to you? Did Goshe offer to eat that monk? Eat that cat? What is going on? Because why are you just so unprovoked in your response to lesbianism and to gay things all in general. Like, it's actually really weird and disturbing at this point. Do you have dreams that you're trying to suppress? You know, normally they used to say the girls that used to come off like this the most were the ones that really wanted to get down in the dirt and see what it was really all about. Is that what this is about? Because it's giving, what's it giving, y'all? It's giving homophobe. It's giving homophobe. It's given what I called you since the beginning of the show. And there's no way around it. In my opinion, you're homophobic. Not only in my opinion is she homophobic, but also in Gauche's as well, who after hearing enough of these raps, goes ahead and lets her know point blank and the period, girl, you're homophobic. Princess takes the ladies to a dance class hosted by Drea Kelly, and she is just yelling at everybody, girl, Drea. Oh, Drea, oh my God, you know, and that's the R. Kelly of it all. Because what did you know? We had to take a pause because, whew, anyways, you know, hopefully... I don't even know what to say about the R. Kelly of it all and the Drea Kelly of it all. I wouldn't even want that last name. I would just be simply Drea. If you're so positive forward and you're moving forward and you're healing and all of those things, I didn't watch those documentaries. I don't know what type of abuse she may have suffered being married to that man for as long as she was or what she saw, what she didn't see. So I'm sure someone can educate me because I, unlike Tamika, have no problem being educated every day that you live on this earth is the day that you should learn something. I don't want to walk around in ignorance. So if there's something that Drea, you know, I don't know. I don't want to talk about Drea with that bullshit. I don't, I don't really want to talk about it. Either way it goes, she's yelling at everyone, you know, affirmations. And um, it really triggered Goshe who walks off. Um, Malaysia goes and follows her and Goshe opens up about her childhood molestation and, uh, Malaysia says it was crazy because the last time they linked up, it was heavy on her heart and she went home crying and she felt like there was a girl crying, please no or stop. And she felt like it was Goshe because that's who she had been spending the most time with in the group. Um, and Goshe and her just have a tearful embrace. And it's really a powerful and impactful scene. And that's what happens when you connect with people on a human level. When the connection is there, in your spirit as far as that ability to have empathy and have um, sympathy and just willingness to understand another person's situation and upbringing and why they are the way that they are today. That's a fundamental skill in, in, in connection that Tamika lacks. 
lax, wholeheartedly lax. Mm. So back on the bus, they're joined by Shad, friend of Crystal and Malaysia's, and Goshe announces that she's hosting an event uh, in support of the LGBTQIA and awareness, and that it will be $100 a ticket as it'll be a drag show and as well feature an appearance by T.S. Madison. Uh, Tamika raises a question about awareness because no one, um, she says sarcastically, I mean, is no one aware? Why do I need to continue to be aware about the ongoing plight of the LGBTQIA community? Goshe feels that she should come because if she isn't, because in Goshe's opinion, she isn't aware enough and she should come so she does not look like a hater towards the LGBTQIA community. Uh, Tamika feels like this is reverse bullying if she doesn't support lifestyles, if she doesn't support choices, if she has different ideology, then she will be bullied in reverse for having those opinions about the way people choose to live their life. And it is unfair to her. Let me just put a pin in here and just say this, okay? As a gay person, I know for a fact, I, there's two things I didn't choose to be. I didn't choose to be black, okay? I didn't choose to be black. But every day I wake up, I am proud of my blackness. I am loud of my blackness. And the fact that black people have been oppressed for eons and eons and centuries and years upon years makes me even louder in my blackness, makes me even prouder in my blackness because we have fought for everything that we have gotten in this country, in this life thereafter. Okay, do you hear what I'm saying to you? And another thing is I didn't choose to be gay. I didn't wake up and say, hey, not only am I a black male, but let me just go ahead and add gay to it just so they can hate me a little bit more. Just so I can just walk around and just, just, just fuck the game up. Just completely go through life in adversary. Go through life in combativeness. Go through life fighting like Miss uh, Sophia. Like, all my life. Like, literally all of my life I've had to fight. And I hate to use that. But I just want to break it down and be very clear about why using words such as lifestyle is a trigger, using such words such as choice is a trigger. I didn't choose this. The only choice that I made was once I reconciled that this is who I am, I chose to embrace myself. I chose to love myself despite and in spite of people like Yap Mouth, people like Tamika, who go around spouting ignorance as you have chosen to do. You got to get in touch with yourself, mom, and figure out where all of this nonchalance is coming from, where all of this disconnect is coming from, because it does not look pretty on you at all. And for someone who has had to battle comments for people calling her every type of which way but lose what she looks like and what they feel like she should look like as being the wife of Usher and what they feel like aesthetically she should give, you should know better. Because if the people are already saying you look like one way, you're adding to it self-induced by being a hater, being nasty, being miserable, being bitter about something that has nothing that I have anything to do with, neither do the LGBTQIA. You're trash. Hmm. She says she's older, so she doesn't subscribe to the same ideologies. And Goshe points out that Tamika is uncomfortable when this topic, I am literally shaking, when this topic comes up. But she expects, respects, excuse me. Mm -mm -mm. But she respects everyone's choices and their sexual preference as, as just the amount of ignorance spouted from Tamika this whole episode, it's just, it's not given. I won't be signing your petition. I take that back from episode one. Fuck you and that link, okay? I'm not signing that. Oh, she wouldn't shun her children if they were gay, um, but it would be a learning curve for her. So then you do admit that there is some education that you do need. Malaysia says she doesn't want any mess on the bus at Dr. Princess's strip club. And Goshe says, well, shout out to the booty because I'm excited to go. And Tamika makes the ugliest face. And the word on the street, the tease that I've gotten, allegedly Tamika is 
homophobic, even though she surrounds herself with the gays, they don't like her and she doesn't like them. So I'm not understanding where the beneficial relationship comes in. Is it because, oh, I work with Tamika, maybe that gives me a leg up in uh, society as far as my work is, is concerned. And Tamika knows she's got to go to the games to get it whipped up. Either way it goes, I beg you two to loose up each other because the people who work for you allegedly, Tamika, don't like you. And as I stated last episode, it's a situation where if you have anyone around you that is not a yes man, you have no use for them in your circle. And we'll get to that in just a few moments. Malaysia pulls Tamika aside at the strip club and tells her she thinks that they should go support Gaucher's event. She feels that she is going to be bullied. She being Tamika feels that she'll be bullied if she does not go. And uh, she'll do everything to spread the word, get people to go. She may even donate, but she will not be paying the full fee of $100. Like, what is it? Like, you are just, what is it? What is it? Like, I'm disgusted and shaking doing this review. It's going to be one of the quickest reviews that you see on No Chaser TV because y'all know I like to give y'all an hour or more of a baby. I don't really have much for her. So Malaysia explains to her that as straight women, it is important to be there and show sisterhood. Tamika says that she isn't phobic because she doesn't have a fear of gay people. She just doesn't need more education, although she admitted that if she had a gay child, there would be a learning curve. Girl, you are full of shit. Tamika respects everyone's life choices again, and she doesn't need to know about tops, bottoms, and wants to keep things um, on a virginal level to her ears at some point. Girl, I wish she would keep me at a virginal level on this show and not be on it. Carlos, get rid of her. She's got to go. And it's not because she has different viewpoints or different ideologies. It's the spirit rooted behind the different viewpoint. It's the spirit rooted behind the different ideology. You do not want to learn, okay? But don't tolerate me, baby, because who I love has nothing to do with you and why do you have an opinion on it in the first place? For someone who was so beat down in that relationship with Usher and people having their opinions about her relationship why would you possibly have an opinion about who someone else loves? Because nine times out of 10, it's not a choice. If I had a choice, I would not be gay. I got to be honest with you. I would not. It's not a choice. It's who I am as a person. Okay? And the only choice, again, that I've stated previously is I've made a choice to embrace who I am as a person. I've chosen not to be miserable and waste another woman's time. Because that's all the videos, just playing with each other, cool cat. It's a waste of time, girl. I'm one of the girls. Let's kiki, let's knee slap. Let's have a good time. Don't disrespect me. And Tamika, you are highly disrespectful in every situation on every level of this platform. You have been super disrespectful to everyone on this cast. And they are better than me because if I was one of those ladies on that cast, you would have been got your ass whipped a long time ago. Tamika is with her friend. And while she's getting the facelift, her friend asks her what um, is going on in regards to Gaucher's event. Tamika shares that she um, is not going and Gaucher thinks that she's homophobic because of that. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Her friend wants to know how she said it or why uh, Gaucher would have that impression of Tamika. And Tamika says that she doesn't need more education. The more uh, you know, the more sensitive you become. Excuse me, I'm so sorry, you guys. She doesn't need more education. Like, I am thrown for a loop. This review might be one of the pieces of trash of the channel. I don't know. This might not be a good review. So I'm sorry, you guys. But uh, Tamika's friend asks her, you know, why do you feel like you need don't need any more education? As the more that you know, the more sensitive you will become to the situation. And uh, Tamika says that she doesn't agree and cuts her friends off, her friend off in multiple instances throughout the uh, conversation and becomes even more defensive uh, in that situation that they're speaking of. Uh, Tamika thinks that people need to get thicker skin and she doesn't um, host sensitivity classes every time someone offends her. Tamika says she doesn't say homophobic, excuse me, offensive things to the LGBTQIA community that can be considered homophobic. 
Mm. And even if she does, she feels like she's human as well as being human. Um, you know, she's older and she just goes home at the end of the day and shakes it off and doesn't worry about what she says in the trail of tears of people that she offends in the wake of her offensiveness. <sighs> her friend tells her that she lacks sensitivity and uh, she says they should be open to it. Tamika says that she's not open to it, so therefore, in essence, admitting that she is homophobic and asks her friend if she's open to it, and her friend says that she has no choice but to do to do so because she's currently dating a woman, and Tamika about drop dead, Vaseline faced and all, just drop dead, honey, cracked, even further. Hopefully, this allows her to get it. You're saying these things and you have people that you're connected to that you love and love you, and you're being mean, nasty, malicious, hurtful, gross, disgusting, a monster full of trash. I can't even get my thoughts together about how triggered I was this entire episode. Like, it was gross. <sighs> Tamika. I really feel that the reason why you are the person that you are is because you've suffered two catastrophic losses that we know about. Your, your, the death of the relationship with Usher as well as the untimely passing of your son and that has cut off a lot of emotion for you and you live in this world where you do and say things as you please and it is your outer defense mechanism um, to protect yourself from any further hurt from life and what it can bring. And I'm here to tell you, I don't give a damn anymore. I don't care. I don't care. You're hurting, you're hurting others. And I will refuse to allow you to hurt me on this platform any further. I am almost this close to cutting off reviews of Bold and Bougie because you are insufferable. And I say it again, and I'm not missing no two ways about it, an insufferable human being for making me have to sit through this and you feeling this way I don't care. Just as we tell people on black issues, it's not our it's not our position and place to educate you. I'm not going to educate you on being a decent human being. I'm not going to educate you on treating people the way that you truly feel like you should have deserved to have been treated when those tragedies happened to you. You know how I felt to be on the other end of it. So what do you do as opposed to being on the other end of it and treating people the way that you feel like you deserve to be treated? You join that other end of it and you treat people the way that they treated you. You are garbage. I don't have nothing else to say. I'm sick of this. I am done. And uh, I'm sure we'll have a better review coming soon. But as far as I'm concerned, Tamika, I almost told you to go jump in late, Lanier, but that is something that I can't even do. I don't want to be you. I don't want to be you. I don't want to be you. But as far as I'm concerned, the way that you do with people like this, you can't educate people like this, y'all. That's going to be nothing that you say that allows a person like this who is completely cut off and devoid of all emotion to understand where you are, where you've been, where you're going, and what you've had to endure. So what you do with people like this is you leave them where they're at because you have no other choice but to do so. You have to leave them where they're at. I'm utterly disgusted. I got to be honest with you. Thank y'all for tuning in to Bold and Bougie episode six. This is it for the week. I am sick to my stomach. I'm literally shaking. I'm fuming. I got to go. See y'all tomorrow.